here's a new one with an interesting background. Both the words and the tune have a little bit of background. Let's first, let's talk about the words, because the words are actually older than the song. Yeah. The words go back to an old liturgical poet, a Sephardic poet, Rabbi Yisroel Nejara, who lived in Tzfas. He was there at the same time concurrently with the Arizal, Rabbi Yitzchok Luria, and he actually was very much influenced by Lurianic Kabbalah, became a Kabbalist. Then there was a pogrom. They, he and his family, they moved to Damascus. Apparently, that was a safer neighborhood at the time. And then he ended up, interestingly, yeah. in Gaza. And that's where he is buried. He's buried in Gaza. He was the Rav, chief rabbi of Gaza. Wow. Yeah. So he composed many uh, piyut and many liturgical poems, which are the basis of many uh, Shabbos mirrors. Yeah, sure. Uh, Kori Ben Olam. That was very his. famous one, yeah. So these are his words. Now, the tune is a little bit more recent. The tune goes back uh, about 120 years ago. And it was brought to Lubavitch right after the passing of the Rebbe Marash. Right. And it was brought by a chosid from Hebron, who was a, a descendant of Rebbe Tzin Menucha Rachel. You know, Rebbe Tzin Menucha Rachel was the daughter of the Mitler Rebbe, and she lived in Hebron. She's mm -hmm. buried there in Hebron. So her grandson, Rebbe Shner Zalman Slonim, he, he came back to Lubavitch, right. and then he returned to Eretz Yisrael later, mm -hmm. but he brought with him some tunes from, from Eretz Yisrael. As we mentioned, the Nigun reached Lubavitch right at a sort of a crucial, pivotal time, right after the fourth Rebbe, the Rebbe Marash was nistalic after his passing, and his sons used to sing this song tearfully, sort of grieving for their, for their father. And it was a favorite Nigun of uh, the Rebbe Rashab. So in the first stanza, uh, there's a, uh, a phrase there borrowed from uh, the story of David and Goliath, that uh, David's older brother Eliav says to him, uh, what are you doing here fighting? You're the shepherd who's, uh, you've right. abandoned the sheep. Yeah. Who's paying attention to the, the few sheep. So that phrase really uh, brought out a, a feeling of... Uh, yearning for yearning. The, the shepherd and the, his loving guidance. Yep. The, the Friedrich Rebbe also mentioned, Shmini Atzeres, Tovshin Gimel, that there's a, a double meaning that he, he heard from his father, from the Rebbe Rashab as well. Ma'at hatsoin, ma'at is like va'at ma'at kol ho'amim. You are the ma'at, ma'at sometimes we'd say are, you are the fewest of nations. Hmm. But actually there's a double meaning which is you're humble, you make yourself small, which is actually how Rashi explains that verse. You make yourself sure. small. So amin etash de ma'at hatsoin, who's paying attention to the humility? Who's making sure that chassidim remain humble and have bittle, the proper self-effacement. Wow. Sechavav, let's say, Yedeyatsoim. 